Welcome again. Right now we're at Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Trinity Doctrine Revisited. In the context of speaking about Jesus, Paul said he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That is a mouthful. Jesus is the image of God. Is he God? Put it this way. When you look at me right now, when you're looking at the screen, someone may come up to you and point to the screen and say, who is that? And you can say, well, that's Christopher. But is it really Christopher? Or is it an image of Christopher? Is it pixels on a screen? Or is it really Christopher? This is what it's like when it comes to Jesus and God the Father. You can point at Jesus and say, that's God the Father. But is it really? It is an image of God the Father. He is in all respects showing us God the Father. He is the image of the Father, but he's not exactly the Father in every aspect. He is the image of God the Father. You can't really say that is the absolute, that is the Father right there. That is him. In a way you can, but in a way it's not. It's not literally the Father. It is an image of the Father. Now also in this verse, it says that Christ is the firstborn of all creation. Jesus was born of God, not created of God. This is a huge, huge thing that most people do not understand at all. Remember, in Isaiah, God said, I create darkness. What he does, what he does with his hands, what he does, what he creates is corruptible. Okay, Everything he creates is corruptible. He created the trees. The trees will die one day. It will rot. It will become dirt again. Humans, he created plants. He created all these things that one day will go back to the earth. It, it is corruptible. Okay, He creates darkness. So everything he makes with his hands has a beginning and has an end. It is corruptible. It is working toward the end. Okay, Just like man. Just like humans, what we make with our hands is corruptible. I hold a pen in my hand. One of these days, this pen is going to be back to dust. Okay, It came from the dust, so to speak. It came from the earth, and it's going back to the earth. It's going to one day decompose, and it's going to be back to the earth. It's corruptible. Everything that man made is corruptible. That's because man is created in the image of God. Everything that God made with his hands is corruptible. But God himself is incorruptible. So it says in Isaiah, he creates the darkness, but he forms the light. What makes him, what, his form is the light. He creates the darkness. Say, so how can the light create the darkness? Well, the light can withdraw itself. He creates the darkness. He creates corruptible things. But he himself is incorruptible. So what comes of him, what partakes of his nature is incorruptible. That is why Jesus never sinned. He had the nature of God. That is why Adam sinned is because he was not born of God, but rather he was created of God. Most people don't understand this, okay? So Jesus wasn't the first creation. He was the first born, which is huge. It is a big difference between the creation of God and being born of God being part of him. For by him, all things, by Christ, by Jesus, all things were created in the heavens and on earth, visible things and invisible things, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. How can that be, you might say? Well, John says in John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14, in the beginning was the Word, the Word of God, and the Word became flesh. The Word took on human form, and that is Jesus. So Jesus is the personification of the Word. He is the Word of God. He is everything that God spoke in human form, okay? God created everything by His Word. He said, let there be light, and Jesus 
said, I am the light. God created everything by his word. Jesus is the word. So that is how Jesus created all things. Jesus created all things by being the word of the Father, being the image of the Father. And that brings me to another significant point that Jesus existed since before the creation of the world. He walked and talked with Adam knew Jesus. Abel knew Jesus. Abraham knew Jesus. Actually, Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and he was glad. Abraham saw me and was glad. Moses knew Jesus. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that Jesus was with Moses in the wilderness. It says that in the book of Acts, that the church of God, the church of Jesus was in the wilderness with Moses, okay? So Jesus existed since before the creation of the world. And all of the patriarchs knew him and knew him well. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. He is the head of the body, the assembly, that's the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Again, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For all the fullness was pleased to dwell in him. That is all the fullness of God, all the fullness of the nature of God was pleased to dwell in him. And through him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in the heavens, having made peace through the blood of his cross. You being in past times alienated and enemies in your mind, in your evil deeds, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and without defect and blameless before him. If it is so that you continue in the faith. If, big if there. If it is so that you continue in the faith. Remember, Jesus said, those who endure to the end will be saved, grounded and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the good news of the gospel, which you heard, which is being proclaimed in all creation under heaven, of which I, Paul, was made a servant. Seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him, another if, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.